Transition is a word that sends a shiver down the spine of many parents whose children are disabled. And so this film is an introduction to the subject of transition because I'm hoping to do quite a few more films on that subject. But this is the introduction when I'm just going to um, start talking about the idea of transition, what it involves, what as parents and carers we need to think about and some tips that I'd like to share with you about how to approach that period. So transition, by that I mean the period between when your child leaves school and leaves children's services and moves into the adult world, uh, be that adult social services, adult education, uh, adult care, uh, and I know transition can mean lots of different things, but in this particular case, when we're talking about people with disabilities, it's generally considered to be the sort of age between 16 and about 23 or 24, when all those big uh, transitions happen. So why am I interested in transition? Well, it is a bit of a pet project of mine, and it has been for way longer than it should have been, really. I started being uh, interested in transition when my son was really quite small, when he was about seven. Uh, he's been at the same additional support needs school um, throughout his um, schooling time. So from the age of five up until he's now approaching 16. So he's been at the same additional support needs school. And I have seen, I can't tell you how many stories of young people who have left school um, and the stories that they've told have never been good. And it, there seems to be this unifying uh, experience of distress when your young person is leaving school and moving into the adult world and going through transition. And this really concerned me from all that time ago, uh, even though my own son was way off uh, going through transition himself, I started to become really aware of this terrible thing that seemed to happen to families at this particular stage of their child's life. One of the things I have observed is that as parents, we have a tendency to stick our heads in the sand a little bit about transition and I totally get it. It is uh, daunting, it's worrying, it's upsetting, uh, it's difficult, uh, it's challenging. Lots of really tricky words can be used to describe how parents and carers feel in that run up to transition. And so it's a, a really um, understandable reaction is to just almost pretend it's not happening and think I'll oh, somebody else will deal with it or a plan will appear or the school will sort it out or the social worker will sort it out when actually what generally tends to happen is those things don't happen and that moment of leaving school or that last six months of being at school suddenly is upon us and there's no plans in place not anything significant that's really going to to make the difference uh, and then the crisis erupts. So I suppose my first starting point is to try and encourage you all not to stick your head in the sand. As tempting as it may be and as frightening as the whole experience seems to look is to engage, to try not to pretend that it's not happening because it's inevitable. It's a step that all our kids are going to go through. They're all going to have to leave school at some point and they're all going to have to leave their paediatrician. They're all going to have to leave their respite services that are for, for kids or whatever setup you have that is purely for children is going to have to change. So better that it's done with planning. So that's my big number one tip is don't ignore it. Let's think for a minute about what makes it difficult. Why, why is this transition? And I don't think I'm being overly negative. I am purely talking from the experience of other parents, many of them who have gone through this period, particularly with children who have got very complex needs because the transition is therefore more complex. So what makes it more difficult? I think from what I've observed, it is a lack of communication. So it's professionals, not communicating properly with parents about what the system is, how it works, what the plans are. I think lack of time is a big problem. So quite often transition doesn't start getting planned until about six months before the young person leaves school. And it, if particularly if your child has got complex needs, 
that's too late. It needs to be started way earlier. And there are um, statutory guidelines in the law um, that advise professionals to be starting it way earlier than six months. Um, but in many, many cases that doesn't happen. So time is a big problem. And that's where I can go back to my number one tip, which is don't stick your head in the sand, start thinking about it as early as you can, because then you're starting to mitigate against that timing issue. There are definitely difficulties around uh, services that are available, um, budgets that are available, uh, social workers that are available or not available, uh, knowledge of the professionals that you're dealing with. These are all problems that you're going to encounter. And I think if you can be prepared for them, you're in a better place to deal with it. What do we need to think about when we're thinking about our young person's transition? Clearly, number one on the list is school. They're going to be leaving school uh, where they have probably been full time. Uh, and so you're going to be thinking about what that young person wants to do when they leave school, whether it be further education, apprenticeships, whether they're going to uh, need 24 seven support. Uh, so do they need support workers? Are you looking at day services? Are you looking at um, activities? So what is that young person going to do with their day once they leave school? You need to think about benefits, uh, which change once your young person becomes an adult. We want to be thinking about self-directed support, whether or not you're going to get a budget from your local authority and how that might look and going through new assessments for adult social services rather than the children's social services you're used to. You might want to think about housing. Um, that may be a bit too far down the road for you or it may be something that you're absolutely considering. But housing is something you want to think about. We also need to consider medical transition, and this is one that sometimes slips through the net. If your child is receiving lots of medical services, if they have specialists, if they have an orthopaedic surgeon, if they have a gastroenterologist, if they have a dietitian, it, all of these people are quite likely to be paediatric based. You might be used to going to your local children's hospital. You might be used to taking your child onto the children's ward at your local district general hospital. These things will change depending where you live and what setup you have locally will depend what age that happens, whether that's 16, 17, 18. Uh, and there are in some parts of the country uh, and maybe wider afield in the world, there may be some great transition setups for helping children and young people and their families move through that medical transition. And in other places, there may not. Uh, and and I will do a video specifically about medical transition because I think this is something that um, we tend not to think about because it just doesn't cross our minds often. So it is something that we can plan for. And particularly in the UK, I'm not totally um, up on what happens in other countries, but in the UK, you want to be thinking about guardianship. Here in Scotland, uh, children turn to adults at 16, so they legally become responsible for their own decisions at the age of 16. And if your young person is not capable of making certain decisions for themselves, then you can apply to be their legal guardian. And that can be their financial guardian. So if they're not capable of making decisions about money and paying for things, and receiving benefits and spending them wisely, you can get financial guardianship. And if your young person isn't um, capable of making good decisions about their welfare, about their medical decisions, where they live, what they eat, etc., you can apply for welfare guardianship. It's quite a, a time consuming process, uh, not necessarily for you personally, there's you need to find yourself a solicitor who preferably has got experience and there's some forms to fill in and things to sign. It's the bit out with your front door that can take a little bit of time. So again, that's something I will do a film about. Uh, but if you're approaching that age of 16 and I haven't got my film done yet, then that's something you might want to start looking into yourself. So you can see there's quite a lot you need to think about. and. Uh, Planning early will help you navigate all of those different things and knowing what it is you need to think about. So there's your list is these are the things that you need to consider and what can go wrong if you don't address all of those things. And I say you in the most global sense, 
I think ultimate responsibility does fall with us as parents and carers because it's our kids that we're talking about. Um, but you should be able to offload responsibilities for some of these things onto professionals around you. Um, but what, what can um, go wrong if we don't get organised and get these things sorted? Well, obvious, the most obvious one is that your young person leaves school and they have nothing to do every day. Uh, if you haven't got guardianship and, for example, a medical emergency occurs and the physicians that are dealing with your young person have a different opinion about what treatment your child should receive to you, you may find yourself in a bit of a tricky situation. I don't think often that the professionals would totally against, go against the parents' wishes, but if you've got that legal guardianship to back you up, it just covers that eventuality. Clearly, if you haven't got your benefits sorted, you might be losing out on financial help uh, that would be owed to your young person um, for once they've become an adult. And let's face it, uh, I think one of the big things that, that concern parents about transition, if it doesn't go smoothly and everything doesn't get set up, is that if you're working, if you're a working parent and your child is suddenly not at school every day, that's a big deal. Um, because somebody needs to be there for your young person when they're not at school. Um, so this can be a real challenge for, for, for us as parents and carers. So I know I keep harping on a bit about it and you're all going to be bored to tears of it, but get planning, get thinking about it. Don't leave it till the last minute. Who should we be expecting to help us with this? Social work, obviously. Uh, your son or daughter's school should be getting involved with transition and they should be planning at least a year in advance of school leaving age. Um, it, when you're talking about medical transition, physicians, paediatrician, GP, they should all be getting involved. And what happens with each of those professionals is very geographically dependent. It will depend where you live, how busy your social worker is, how um, educated your school are about transition, how experienced they are. If your child is in a mainstream school, transition for them might be all about applying for college or university. Uh, and so they may need a little bit of guidance um, as to what transition looks like for a child that's got additional support needs. So I really think that as a parent or carer, you need to become the expert on your child or young person's transition. And I think you need to start thinking about it when they're about 14. And I know that sounds really scary and it sounds way too early. And maybe if your child is definitely, definitely not gonna be leaving school till they're 18, you can leave it a bit later. You could leave it until they're 15 or 16 years old, as long as you've thought about guardianship, uh, if you're living in a country where adulthood starts at 16. So somewhere between 14 and 16 years old, you need to be starting to think about it. Just a little point there, something that can help you with that pinpointing when you need to start thinking about it is having a really accurate idea of your child's school leaving age when they're going to leave school. If your child is in mainstream school, that might be fairly straightforward for you because they might be in their chronological class. So they might be in year five, year six, year seven, and you know to the day when that child will be leaving school. If your child is in an additional support needs school, things can get a little bit muddier. So my son James has never been in a year one, two, year three class. It's been junior primary or senior primary or secondary one or secondary two. It's a small school. They're grouped according to ability, not so much age. And to be quite honest, I've never thought about which year group, chronological year group that James falls into. So um, if that's the case for you, then I would get on to your social worker in plenty of time. So at 14, 15 and be asking them for a definite school leaving age. Uh, that way you're not going to get caught out because your local authority might have certain rules. They might say um, you have to leave after your 18th birthday or they may say you've got a set number of education years that you can have in secondary school or throughout your schooling. And when those years are up, off you go. And I know locally that can even mean the local authority expecting your child to leave school in December not necessarily the end of the academic year. And that can get people caught out because if you're not expecting that, you can be as organised as you like planning for summer of 2020. And if the school turn around to you and say, well, actually they're expected to leave in December of 1919, 
2019, then, then that completely throws your plans up in the air and uh, you're back to square one again. So I would highly recommend that if you're approaching this period that you get clarification about school leaving age and get a year. I know James is leaving school summer 2020, that's D-Day. So we can start planning really well for that time, no surprises. I think I should acknowledge at this point as well, because I can hear parents shouting at me that have been through transition um, saying, I was really organised, I had plans written, um, I chased all the professionals and transition still didn't go as we'd hoped it would. I, yeah, I know. And, and I suppose when I keep saying about being organised and being the expert on your child's transition and making sure that you know when they're leaving school, you can do all of those things. And I know that you're still heavily reliant on the professionals around you. At the end of the day, we are still reliant on social workers um, getting budget assessments done and coming up with budgets. And we're reliant on, if you're looking for a service for your young person, we're still reliant on them being there. We're reliant on there being college placements available. I know, I, I do get that. And I think I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I have, the, the magic wands to wave and that if you go away and become an expert on transition, everything will be fine. I think what I'm saying is it will be easier and uh, you'll know what's coming. You'll know what you're uh, entitled to, what your child, your young person is entitled to, and it does help. So no, it's not a magic bullet, but it will help. As I said, this is the first video of many that will create a series of transition films. Um, hold tight, I'll get them done as quickly as, as I can. I'm going to try and rope in some professionals to come and give their um, insight and expertise as well. Uh, but in the meantime, if anybody has got any particular issues they want me to cover about transition, then please do put it in the comments below um, and that will help me decide what you all want to know about. And stay tuned for the, uh, for the next videos about transition. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that transition introduction video. Um, as carers, it can be quite difficult to find good quality, reliable information and inspiration. So that's what this channel is all about. So don't forget to click the subscribe button. Uh, that way it's free and that way you'll get to know about all the videos as I release them.